close your eyes and focus on your breath. Watch it all the way in, all the way out. Try to be on good terms with your breath. See what kind of breathing feels good for the body right now. And you can experiment with different kinds of breathing. Nudge it so it's a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, faster, slower, and see how it feels. And then pay careful attention to it. The breath is always there. In a John Fung's image, it's like a nurse who is always looking after us, but we don't pay much attention to our nurse. We don't care about how she's doing. And so as a re result, she doesn't give, give us the best that she can give. But if you pay careful attention to her, see what she needs, she'll look after you. Or in his image, it wasn't really a nurse. It was basically your older sister looking after you when you were a little child. Little children don't seem to care about how their caretakers are, looking, are doing. And so the caretakers get a little bit upset. But if the child shows a lot of interest in the caretaker, the caretaker will show interest in the child. It's the same with the breath. The breath can do an awful lot for the body, it can do an awful lot for the mind. It's the bodily fabrication, in other words, it's the element in the body or the property of the body that governs all the rest. It's through the breath that you know your body. And when you breathe well, it creates a sense of well-being in the body. When there's a sense of well-being in the body, it improves your mood. When it improves your mood, you think, you think straight. Let's put it that way. You think clearly. You're not driven around by feelings of dis-ease. So here it is. The breath's always there, but if you pay attention to it, it can do more for you, for you than just keep you alive. It pr provides a good home for you. It provides a good place for the mind to settle in and feel at ease, feel confident, feel strong. So give it attention and it will repay you many times over.